There we have it, Samsung Galaxy, a 10-game winning streak, moving on to LA Staples Center to face off against the reigning yeah. world champions in SK Telecom. New goal to beat Faker. Very dangerous things to say before <laughs> playing Faker. Faker, in the press conference afterwards, said he was annoyed the crowd was cheering for Peanut. Like, this guy Ooh. definitely wants to be known well, as the best player. He said in I the interview that he himself felt like he has risen back to the level of undisputed best player in the I world. So has. there you have it. I mean, if Crown wants to take him down, he himself has to put up a world's best performance. But I like it. That's a goal that you throw, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to go into this final and be like, we can't do it, of course. And as the best player on that team, in my opinion, that is what Crown is. You have to be able to take it to Faker in that mid lane. So, you know, for a young kid, a little bit of brashness, a little bit of cockiness is definitely justified when you've carried your team this far into the world. Absolutely. They looked stellar this entire tournament and deserve to move on with confidence. Now, before we do kind of preview all those matchups, I want to take a step back and look at this three-game mm -hmm domination mm -hmm. by Samsung Galaxy. And in particular, this game, again, one, probably accelerating even more over the first two in a win. And when do we start drawing the comparisons? Because for, for a second time in a couple of years, a Samsung team is going with one loss into a finals, and their mid-game is where they Who get they it done. Who did they lose to uh, in both years? I think they lost to TSM or someone like <laughs> that. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, this team <laughs> controls vision in a very similar way. Is able to set up their teleports and their team fights. And then when they go to 1-3-1, they look just as good. I mean, they play multiple styles, and we saw it in this best of three, uh, best of five, sorry. Uh, able to get it done very <laughs> well. like a best of three. That's how quick it was. So I hear you there. All right, but Crepo, talk to me about, once again, this early game here, because it was put together very smartly by Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, the reason I let them talk so much is because we highlighted a phase here brought to you uh, by Acer. I'm just going to steal that for one more time That's here because right. I want to see that replay right now. Because that is... <laughs> look at his ward. So Crown places that. And the context of this ward is that Olaf, instead of doing a two-cam clear, now had a three-cam clear on her left side, goes to his Raptors. He's going for his optimal gank or optimal clear path here, heading to the red buff. The problem in the OF Elise matchup is that you're prone to invades. Yeah, that ward would not have been placed unless Ambition was doing that path. So that's already showing communication, communication. between the mid lane and the jungler. And here, Yankos walks over the ward. So instead of just finishing the red buff, Ambition's actually able to pull it back, get the recharge on his axe, get the hits in, and then barely get it into smite range before Yankos makes it there. Yeah, and he would never know how close Yankos is there. So that ward allows an extra camp to be taken. Ambition then went mid into a pressure gank, then ran top. This is a mistake by Odo Amnib. What, what is he supposed to do when Kruger plays the lane so well? He ganks top. He swings the one super winning matchup in the late game. Trundle versus Poppy gets QV the advantage. And I, this is how I like that Samsung plays together. It all ties together from ward to super clear, gank path, top lane. Uh, get the matchup gets switched uh, on its head and suddenly Samsung is in complete control for us And I just love that he doesn't waste time trying to contest Yankos in his own jungle, right? He's like no 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 I'm just this team is so efficient in the way that they act and move around the map and everything has to go right there You get double summoner spells you get the deep ward That means you can track the elise you get the shove in the top lane with the poppy Which you don't normally get unless you really want it because you get out traded So I really do think that this is one of those players that highlights that four players are on the exact same page uh, and that's impressive. As I said, like you have to start drawing comparisons because this young squad is like looking real formidable. Player of the game here, we got to recognize, is going to ambition. I mean, that's part of why. Just the presence of mind. And then if we look back to that number one game, Spawn, you talked about it. Him being the eldest member of the team, kind of that veteran there, definitely keeping them in it. Yeah, they talk about it so much. You know, the heart and soul of the team, the person that leads the communication. And when you're falling behind in early games and getting killed, you need that guy to keep your team positive. And ambition, time and time again, is credited for that for Samsung. Yeah, so good at working with the team. I think if I, was, if I was the one choosing this, I may have given it to Crown because of the mid lane play, but I absolutely understand the choice because of the pathing and because of who is making the plays. So many good uses of Fog of War. And also in that game one, when they were against the ropes, he came up with the big plays on Nidalee. And also because we said to beat this H2K lineup, you have to slow down uh, Yankos. You have to be able to stop that top jungle synergy. And they were able to do that in multiple occasions. I mean, talking about stellar plays, you already mentioned Crown, but we got to look at Kuve as well. In game one, he got ganked plenty. In game too, he got ganked plenty, but he continually won those matchups and was able to turn them around. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they, they're just revealing sturdy player after sturdy player after sturdy player that can then hopefully go head-to-head -head with SKT. It's going to be a tall amount of the climb for them, but Crown, I'm excited to see what he could do. Challenge Faker a little bit. Just He just gets more out of these certain champions than he's supposed to. Like, Victor's not supposed to go even or ahead in some of these matchups, but Crown somehow makes it 
possible by getting really good early trades. Yeah, yeah he's an absolute machine, but you, we keep talking about, you know, this next opponent. It's better than anyone they've faced, but at the end of the day, they are able to take down KT. They run through groups the way they did against pretty good opponents as well. They get into this stage. I mean, they knocked out TSM, and they had to go head-to-head -head with RNG. It's not like they're playing bad teams. Have they played someone like SKT yet? No, no way. No one in the world is like that team, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, they still have overcome very classy opponents to make it this far. And as we you know, acknowledge Samsung Galaxy moving on to the finals. We have to bid farewell to H2K, the only Western team to make it as far as the semifinals. And although they got 3-0 tonight, Deficio was saying that they should be proud of their accomplishments here at the World Championship. Honestly, they matched on a, a lot of European teams in terms of legacy. Because for me, season one doesn't really count. Then season two was kind of underdeveloped as well. We had the CLGU, Moscow 5 there. Then there was Fnatic. Then there was nothing. Then there was Fnatic and Origin again, all up to the semifinals. H2K now can get added to that list. They matched the best European results at Worlds historically, and they can be proud about that. And Yankos was insane in a oh. lot of these games. He had spectacular mechanics, spectacular pathing. Every player also had their individual time to shine for H2K. There was a game that every individual member of that team were able to carry. They couldn't put it together against Samsung. This was a really bad day for H2K, I think, on top of also playing against their best opponent yet. And semifinals, that's how far they made And unfortunately, due to recency bias, you remember the bad, uh, the close games. But that day that they put up in group stage, where they're able to run through the whole entire, uh, the entirety of their group, and then you know do it to EDG again. People are going to look back at that play out of Ryu and be like, this guy is legit. Didn't play well today, but had some of the best League of Legends in that group stage day. It was like a phenomenal. I really hope the SHK lineup can carry on their strengths into the next season in Europe because they definitely have within them to be a contender for four, especially if you look at how the teams around them have kind of capitulated overall. Fnatic without a roster right now, Origin completely collapsed. Or H2K could be a front runner for the title in Europe if they can play to their strengths like they did here. Absolutely. Well, now it's time to take a look at the updated bracket. SKT and Sunsound Galaxy have emerged victorious in the semifinals and will move on to the Staples Center in Los Angeles to battle for the World Championship. Now, even if you're staying at home for finals, we're celebrating the last round of Worlds over two days, and you're invited to join in on the festivities. Tune in Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific time for an awesome event streamed live on watch.lollysports.com. We'll kick things off with a special live edition of Primetime League, followed by an all-mid all-star deathmatch. We'll have a cosplay showcase hosted by the All Chat crew, Riot musicians and composers backed by members of the Hollywood Chamber Orchestra. We'll cap off the night with the music of League of Legends live. Lastly, the countdown to finals begins with a marathon of the best games in world's history, leading right up until our pregame coverage of the final fight on Saturday at 2.30 Pacific. Are we replaying the SKT Rocks best of five? Is that the Twice. We, yeah, right? We just gotta <laughs> yeah, boom. Just, just play it. that whole series, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then we can start making our way into the history books. All right, but before we turn out the lights here at the Garden, let's go ahead and look at some of your semifinal world's big plays brought to you by Triple X Return of Xander Cage. At Raven Sword Wing sums up one of yesterday's show-stopping moments. That arrow, best ash arrow in league history. Let's take a look. Oh, baby. And they even got the pickoff on Bang. Rox doesn't actually have to stop pushing right now. They can delay the recalls. The arrow, arrow. arrows. Look at the arrow. Get teleport. He the arrow. He stopped him. Stop two. Quick beat. They get pushed. But they get it. They're going to win. The Nexus. They're trying to burn it down. Is this not going to be enough? It's not. Rox Tigers answer back with game two. Here's the hawk shot first. He scouts and then he shoots the arrow. Now. Originally, Echo was recalling, canceled it, and wanted to get there quicker, changed to teleport, and it just barely gets there in time. Yeah, the teleport nerfs that happened this year, adding the extra second to the channel time, pretty impactful it's in right the there. Script. Yeah, I mean, he saw the start of the recall slash teleport, so the aim was easy, but as far as game impact, one of the greatest Ash arrows we've ever seen. Yeah, and you know, people are talking about Peanut's performance yesterday, and it's justified because he played very well, but Pray to me stepped up, elevated himself, has fallen short again in another world. This is a guy that's been there multiple times, but boy, is he a fantastic And we saw it. It made Krepo's knees weak there. Boom, dropped a couple <laughs> inches. All right, well, at Jay Lundgren Sports has an important question and an answer. How do you beat a team with three Infernal Drakes? Well, you beat Faker. Here's your world's big play. Product do not uh, Rappel gets away from this time. He goes in for it, and it's secured by Bangy. That is a big deal. SKT, shot one play, a shot down. They've got three already. They're looking to kill absolutely everybody. Rocks Tigers getting wiped off the face of the map. Smith, the only one alive. And this is why I put so much emphasis on clutch players. Faker and Bang, the SKT have shown on the biggest stage they are reliable and they can come up with these plays. 
Yeah, climactic probably in that series, but I also have another answer for how you beat three Infernal Drakes. Okay. 10,000 gold leads. Oh, that that's, definitely helps. that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. But that is one of those moments that we talked about where that entire series kind of hinged on just singular plays, right? Because again, with those three Infernal Drakes, Rox is able to extend it maybe a little bit more, and that game mm -hmm. could have gone the other direction and started off the whole series on a different note. Yeah, and Rox should have probably not gotten a single one of those Infernal Drakes. Every single one was uh, kind of procured by some creative plays that they made, and they really just were playing so tight, and then it just all fell apart in the end. So close, so <laughs> close. As you mentioned, maybe we'll see that entire series yeah. come next week <laughs> as we recap Worlds. Now, remember, you can always share your highlight reel moments by tweeting with the Worlds, or rather with the hashtag Worlds Big Plays. Now, stick around for another edition of Worlds tonight with Riv, Deficio, and Papa Smithy. That's going to do it for us here in the Big Apple. Now, for myself and everyone here in New York City, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in L.A.